It's an all-star group of people throughout New York City under the age of 22. We really get to see what it's like to be a professional musician. Every time we have a concert, we say it's better than the concert before it. This is their community. This is their home. This is where their friends are. Their family. Hi, I'm Shauna Quill. I'm the executive director of the New York Youth Symphony. I think what's made the New York Youth Symphony unique for its first 50 years is that it's made possible transformational musical experiences for a wide range of students. The New York Youth Symphony started with this big idea that access to the arts should be open to anybody and without any cost. I'm Joe Garfield. I am the daughter of one of the founders of the New York Youth Symphony and it's been part of our lives for the 50 years that it's been in existence. I am Leslie Garfield on the board of the New York Youth Symphony. My mother's mission was to have a place where people could go and hear classical music free. Joe, you've got to come in from Washington and you've got to hear this group. They're simply, simply wonderful. I went thinking this is going to be tolerable, maybe kids 12 to 22. And we were just knocked, knocked over. I mean, I was blown away, as they say nowadays. From the beginning, it was three free concerts every year. And in then Carnegie Hall. In Carnegie Hall. I have here with me the 1963 press release, which was sent out announcing Exec Perlman's debut at Carnegie Hall with the Youth Symphony Orchestra of New York. It reads, the first in a series of symphonic concerts for young people played by the Youth Symphony Orchestra of New York will be heard at Carnegie Hall Sunday, December 1st at 2.30 p.m. Exec Perlman, 17-year-old Israeli violinist, will perform the Beethoven Violin Concerto. The fact that the review of Perlman was in the Times was an important factor in establishing the credibility of the group. The alumni list from the New York Youth Symphony program includes some of the most prominent musicians in the world today. Maren Alsop, the conductor of the Baltimore Symphony. Lauren Stutton from the Emerson String Quartet was in our viola section. Eric Jacobson of the Knights started in our cello section. Masumi Perrosad, who was a violist, is now violist of the Pacifica Quartet, and he's also worked in our office as a librarian. One of the conductors, Leonard Slatkin, who has since gone on to fame and fortune, right from the start, very talented, and I knew how to handle the kids and everything. The years I was there in the mid-1960s were wonderful. I had the chance to play with the orchestra in both Fisher Hall and Philharmonic Hall and Carnegie Hall. And the person to my left is my brother Fred, and you have a relationship to the orchestra as well. Not easy to realize that all those years ago we walked on the stage of Carnegie Hall. I know. <laughs> and our mother spent days teaching us how to bow. And, and we still don't do it right. Our musicians are young, but our music directors are equally as fresh in their careers. Hello, I'm Joshua Gerson. I'm the music director of the New York Youth Symphony. We have a wonderful season planned for the 2012-13 season. It's our 50th anniversary season, as well as my first as music director, and we have a lot of wonderful programs in store for you. My name is Ryan McAdams. I was the music director of the New York Youth Symphony. I'm very comfortable saying that I've had the best job for any young conductor in America for the last five years. A lot of orchestras for young people are either solely for high school players or they're solely for college age players. This orchestra combines both. Working together, the high school players are challenged and, and inspired by these older players and the older players mature through the process. And I think that's what New York Youth Symphony gives. Everyone who comes into this orchestra is surrounded by people who are as good or better than they are and there isn't any better way to transform when you're a young musician. The New York Youth Symphony started out as just an orchestra, but over its time it has also developed other programs, including the Chamber Music Program. One of the most rewarding um, aspects of this program is getting to know these young people and to see them grow and develop as people and artists, and to see their journey throughout the year. My name is Lydia Vandersva, I'm 15 and I play viola and I've been in the chamber music program, this is my fifth year. And I love everything they provide. I love the master classes, I love the workshops, I love even you know the assessments. I just, the dynamic of everything is so encouraging and 
really such a friendly environment that I know every time I go somewhere that's involved with it, it's so much fun. I've never not had a fun time in any event. The composition program is extremely unique. It's the only one of its kind in the United States and it focuses on a seminar style approach and it teaches a broad range of compositional styles. My name is Jake Landau and I'm part of the Making Score program. Tonight is composition date 2012 which is the Making Score concert. Basically all the composers part of Making Score get to have one of their pieces performed. I plan on writing music as a profession. Whether for concert music or film music or commercial music, Making Score has helped me do that, the New York East Symphony, so much. Ten years ago we began the New York East Symphony Jazz Program. It focuses on music of the 1930s and 40s big band era. Tonight we're playing at Jazz at Lincoln Center in the Allen Room, which I think is one of the most amazing musical venues, not just in New York City, but really in, in the world. I mean, you have world-class sound from world-class engineers. I really think it brings the best out in our students, and it's great that it's the culminating event of our season. I really like Jazz Band Classic. I come here every Sunday. I drive from school usually. It's a really good experience to play some classic big band music. And a lot of this music, it runs the risk of kind of dying, so I'm really glad that JBC gives us the opportunity uh, to really learn it, you know, so that we, the new generation, will have knowledge of you know, this classic material. I think my mother would be so happy that I, uh, I sometimes dream about her. Um, I haven't dreamt about her being at the 50th thing, but I know that she would, would have loved it and would have wanted to get up and sing the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> On the momentous occasion of our 50th anniversary, we're extremely proud of where we've come so far, but we're really looking forward to the next 50 years of providing musical education and access to the next generation of musicians.